We'll begin in a standing position at the back of the yoga mat. You can let your feet ground right underneath the hips, and then draw firmly up all the way through the legs, the spine, connecting the line of energy from the heels all the way out through the skull. And when you stand firmly like this, you should be able to breathe fully and easily into the lower belly, inhaling through the nose, pausing ever so slightly, and then exhaling through the nose. being calm at the beginning of class. On your next inhale breath, let the arms lift overhead. Exhale, draw the hands together and down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms upward to the sky. Exhale, fold from the groins, forward fold. Be soft here as you dangle for a moment and then inhale, stretch up to your halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Ground the feet, inhale, stretch forward halfway. Exhale from the groin, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Strong feet, inhale, reach all the way out and up, lift up. Exhale, hands slide down at the chest. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, sit into Utkatasana chair pose. Knees more over the ankles, deep crease in the groin, belly waving to the spine out through the skull, long lines of energy. Let the eyes be soft and focused. Jaw soft, and exhale, fold from the groin all the way over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift, and full breath, exhale, fold. Inhale, reach out and up all the way to the sky. Exhale, slide the hands at the heart. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Inhale here fully. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale from the crease of the groin, forward fold. Inhale, belly waves to the spine, lift forward halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach out and up. Belly is strong, feet are strong. Exhale, hands at the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Last time, exhale, chair pose. Warming up the thighs, turn on the muscles underneath the thigh bones, and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift up to halfway. Exhale, ground your hands, and gently walk forward until you're in plank pose. Shoulders over wrists, Heels over toes, and hold this pose here, gaining strength. Try to use your fingers more than your wrists. And while the upper arms spin open away from each other, the shoulder blades broaden on the back, collarbones broaden, belly nice and strong. Next, exhale. Come all the way down through Chaturanga, elbows over wrists. And when you come all the way down to the floor, 
Take it easy for a moment. You can rest your hands, you can rest your head. You can wiggle your pelvis a little bit left and right. Keep taking full, rich, three-dimensional breaths into the lower belly. And then stretch your hands back underneath your elbows. Inhale three-dimensionally and peel the chest up using your back muscles to low cobra. Exhale, take the chest back down. Inhale, lift the chest using the back muscles. Exhale, back down. A ripple effect through the spine. Feel the neck, the throat, the skull connect as you inhale, lift. And exhale, go down. Inhale, lifting with the back muscles. Now take weight into the hands and curl all the way up until the arms are straight, shoulders over wrist, throat elongating. Use your belly and pull the pelvis up and back to your first downward facing dog pose. Be easy here just for a moment. And keep your belly intact as you come down to table, knees underneath the pelvis, wrists underneath the shoulders. Inhale, keep your belly strong as the heart lifts up through the arms and you look up to the sky. And then exhale, round in for cat. You can go back and forth. Inhale, warming up the spine, easy back bend, belly is strong. Exhale to curl the belly in, the heart in, and the chin. Match the movement to your breath. This time, come back to neutral, hold the belly strong, let the neck be part of that line, and then tuck the toes, and we'll lift the knees off the yoga mat just an inch. Hold this here, be soft in your face, your eyes are totally easy. And now when you're ready, push yourself up and back to downward facing dog. Let the heels hook the calves down. Inhale, lift your right leg all the way up to the sky, long in both side waists. Stretch open here, feel the shoulders connect, and then bring the right foot back down. Inhale, lift the left leg all the way up to the sky, sideways long, you're connected on the front of your body, and then take the left foot back down. Playing with a few launching pads to strengthen the shoulders and the belly, Keep the crease in this groin as you lift high into the tippy toes and then reach the shoulders ever so slightly towards the wrists. Then bend into your knees, keep the crease in the groin as you push the belly back to the thighs and then straighten the legs and lift up. Take that a few times, just a little launching pad so you bend into the knees, press your belly back and then straighten the legs as you keep the heels lifted to lift you up. And then after your last one, you can step, or if you're in the mood, you can hop all the way forward until you're in forward fold at the top of the yoga mat. Next inhale, fill up and lengthen forward halfway lift. And exhale, forward fold over your legs. Ground your feet, inhale, rise all the way up to stand in your favorite way. Exhale, take the hands together at the chest. Inhale, reach the arms up, breathe into the lower abdomen. Exhale, fold from the groin, forward fold. Inhale, lift up to your halfway lift. And exhale, take the hands down to the yoga mat. Step the left foot all the way to the back of the mat for high lunge. Get a big distance between your legs, press back through your left heel. Get your left thigh as lifted as it can be as you sink into the right leg. Press firmly through the right heel so you get space and strength through the underside of your right leg. Ripple your belly to your spine and all the way out through the skull. Hold this, be soft in your face. When you're ready, drop your left knee down to the floor for low lunge 
and wave your torso to upright, arms overhead. Feel the front of the body connected from the left knee all the way through the torso, out through the fingers. Maybe you slide deeper into the right knee. Next time you exhale, take the hands down underneath the shoulders, lift the back knee away from the floor again, high lunge, same pose. And keep your pelvis exactly right here, your left hand on the floor as you inhale, reach the right arm up to the sky for a twist. Belly to the spine, side waist lengthening evenly from the pelvis out through the skull, breathe deep. Right hand can return to the ground. Now we can press the right foot down and forward to play the edge of the right leg to strength, fold over the right leg. Back leg stays nice and lifted. Feel the legs as they connect into the pelvis, lifting the pelvis so you can fold. Soften into the right knee again for a high lunge. This time ground your feet, roll the spine all the way up to stand, arms overhead. Keep hooking into the right heel, take the right knee deeper into lunge so we strengthen the underside of the right leg, back heel lifted, back knee lifted. Keep the legs, stretch all the way out and forward, hands down, version of Vashistasana side plank, step your right foot back halfway and turn the toes open to the long edge of your yoga mat. Come on the outer edge of your left foot and then reach the right arm up to the sky. Getting into a stretch for the outer right hip should feel very nice. Shoulder blades on the back, belly strong. Take the right hand back to the floor, step the right leg back until you're in plank position. Inhale here and exhale chaturanga to the floor. Set your hands underneath your elbows, set your toenails wide and strong legs as you curl all the way up to a straight arm back bend. And then exhale, use your belly as you go back to downward facing dog. Take an inhale through the nose. And exhale, release through the mouth. Back to your ujjayi breath, in and out through the nose. Deep swirling warmth through the throat. Lift high into the tiptoes and then step hop or walk all the way forward until you're in forward fold at the top of the yoga mat. Inhale, reach forward to halfway. And exhale, return the heart over the thighs, forward fold. Ground your feet and inhale, lift up to a stand in your favorite way. And exhale, hands at the heart. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. And exhale, fold at the groin, forward fold. Inhale, float up halfway. Exhale, hands down. Step the right leg all the way to the very back of the yoga mat for high lunge. Get as much distance between your legs so that your left knee can come right over the ankle and the right heel can be right over the right ball of the foot. Try to unite those lines of energy, left knee into the lunge, back heel pressing away from the lunge, and that'll hook integration all the way through the spine. Drop your right knee down to the floor and then wave up into your low lunge, heart over pelvis, arms up to the sky. Connect the line of energy from your right knee up through the pelvis, through the torso, and then descend deeper into the left knee if you want some more. Stay connected through the pelvis as you reach out and down and forward. Lift the back knee away from the floor for high lunge again. Secure the legs and the pelvis, none of that moves. As you now ground the right hand and twist the left arm up to the sky, heart opening. Feeling secure in the belly, long through the side waist. Long line of energy from tailbone to skull. 
Take the left hand back down to the floor. This time push your left foot down and forward to play the edge of your left leg to straight and fold over it. Back heel lifting, feet active. Descend back into the left knee for high lunge. This time ground your feet and let the spine come to an upright position, arms overhead. Descend into the left knee, press fully through the left heel to hook strength into the underside of the left leg. Back heel rising, back knee rising and thigh rising and then reach up with the freedom that creates in the chest. Fold back down to the floor. Keep the right hand here. Step the left foot back halfway. Toes open to the long edge of the mat as you come into side plank. Outer edge of the right foot. Create a line of energy from your right heel through the leg, the spine, all the way out through the skull. Take the left hand back down to the floor. Gently step the left foot back to high plank. Fill up on an inhale from the inside out and exhale, control the breath and the movement through Chaturanga down to the ground. Set your hands and legs and then inhale, ripple the spine all the way up through a high cobra or an upward facing dog pose. And then exhale, use your belly, pull the pelvis up and back downward facing dog. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Sealing the lips, breathe fully in and out through the nose. Lift high into the tiptoes, then step, walk, or hop all the way to the very top of the yoga mat, forward fold. Inhale, stretch forward to halfway lift. And exhale, forward fold. Ground your feet and inhale, reach the arms out and up to the sky. Exhale, hands at heart. Let's transfer the weight into the left foot as you lift the right leg up into one-legged Tadasana. Go ahead and grab onto the right knee, take it in a few circles, and try to keep your standing body very integrated as if it didn't know that the right foot was lifted. Then we can outturn the right leg and put it on the left leg for tree pose, Vrikshasana. Feel free to take your right foot to the ankle, the calf, or the thigh. As we start to explore standing balance and a little external hip rotation. As you balance, you might find it appropriate to stretch the arms upward to the sky. If not, no worries. You just be where you are. We'll meet with the hands back down at the heart. Rotate the right knee forward, one-legged Tadasana. Quietly drop the right foot down. Observe and adjust. Be nice and still between the balance so you can feel the effects and then lift the left leg up. Same thing, grab onto the left knee, take it in a few circles both directions from the hip socket and try to keep the standing body really receptive and integrated. You can open the left knee, take it to tree pose. If it feels good, you can stretch the arms all the way up to the sky and enjoy a few full deep breaths here. Directing the breath through the throat as it warms, it goes all the way down below the ribs into the lower abdomen. Hands can come together back at the heart, rotating the left knee back forward and dropping the foot down to the ground. Adjust the standing position and breathe.
slide down to chair pose again pulling the weight back deep crease in the groin belly waves to the spine and out through the skull now we'll lift high onto the tiptoes here and try to squat the pelvis down onto the backs of the heels for toe stand coming to a balance here thigh bones parallel shoulders over pelvis skull over that just try to hold this balance be soft in the face and then we can gently take a seat onto the butt balance on the sitting bones lift the heels take the hands behind the legs for a partial boat pose wave the belly to the spine ripple out through the skull set your shoulders and then maybe you take the arms straight warming up through the core building strength on your next inhale we're going to lower to art boat half boat and then on your exhale we'll pull back up inhale opening out to a hover exhale pulling back up use the belly inhale open up the shoulders stay in place exhale pull back up inhale open out throat long exhale pull back up inhale open up and exhale pull up inhale last one and go down rest on the ground Step the feet in close to the pelvis and we'll set up for a bridge pose to stretch out the belly muscles. Arms by the side, press the feet down and forward. The shins drive back though as the pelvis starts to lift off the ground. The frontal hip bones are still drawing downward to the ground as the thigh muscles lift. Lift the chest up to the chin root the shoulders and the arms down breathe deeply gently lower the hips back down to the ground and then you can draw the knees into the chest maybe just circle around for a bit and then grab onto the outer edges of the feet for happy baby pull the knees down to the ground push up through the feet flatten the low back to the ground and breathe Releasing this pose, hands behind the legs, we'll rock and roll a few times the length of the spine, keeping the belly integrated, and then we'll reach forward back into your toe stand. See if you can find that balance. And we'll gently press all the way back up through chair pose, Utkatasana. Full deep breath and exhale. Keep the, uh, the crease in the groin as you forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, hands at the ground. Step the right foot back and then the left foot for plank. Inhale. Exhale, lower through Chaturanga. Inhale. Lift all the way up through your cobra or your upward facing dog pose. Exhale, use your belly, pull the pelvis up and back down dog. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, squeeze the knee forward to the heart. Inhale, nice and slow, lift the right leg up exhale bring the right knee into the heart stay connected on the front of the body as you inhale lift the right leg up exhale bring it forward into the heart and step it through ground your back foot so that it's parallel to the back edge of your mat and roll up to warrior two pelvis mostly faces the side of your yoga mat as you bend deeply into the right knee knee over the ankle Wave the belly back to the spine, tee off the arms. When you feel good and sufficient, you might look over the right shoulder. Take a full few deep breaths here. Feel strong in your legs all the way through the pelvis so that you can inhale. Now reach the right hand up to the sky, take a side bend back. And then exhale, extended side angle, right elbow to the right knee, left arm across the body. Connect your line of energy from your left heel all the way up through the leg and out through the skull and arm. 
and then lift from your right hip as you come back up to warrior two. Take the hands down to the yoga mat. And gently step the right foot all the way back. We'll come into side plank, opening on the left side. So stand on the left arm, feet stacked. Arms are just like they were in warrior two. Shoulder blades on the back. Lengthen the right arm overhead now. And then take the hand down to the floor, high plank. Inhale here. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, ground your hands and feet. Gently curl up nice and slow. And exhale, use the belly to go back, down dog. Keep the right heel grounded. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Exhale, squeeze the knee forward to the chest. Feel your whole body as you go twice more. Inhale, lift the left leg up, one-legged dog. Exhale, come forward. Last one. Inhale, left leg up, right heel down. Exhale, bring the knee forward. Stay lifted, plant the foot down. Spin your back heel open and come up for warrior two on the left. Take your time to set up these poses. Our bodies are all different. We feel them differently. Feel your feet strong, your legs strong into your pelvis so that nothing really changes there as we move into our flowing sequence. Next inhale, lift the left hand up to the sky and stretch back over your pelvis, deep bend in the, in the knee. And then exhale, take the left elbow down to the left knee and stretch to side angle, right arm by the right ear. Unite the right heel through the leg, through the belly, through the spine, out through the fingers. And as we lift back up to warrior two, lift from the left hip bone, the sideways stay evenly long, warrior two. Take the hands down to the floor, ground especially through the right hand as you step the left foot back, and then turn open to side plank, vashistasana, stacking the heels. Unite the line of energy from your heels, through your legs, through your spine, out through your skull. Root the right fingers more than the wrist, and then stretch the left arm overhead. Take the left hand back down to the floor, high plank, inhale and exhale chaturanga. Inhale nice and slow, curl on up. You should feel it like a rippling effect from the belly through the skull. Exhale, same thing, belly moves you back. The rest of the spine follows. Inhale, let's lift the right leg up to the sky. Exhale, bring the right foot through to plant. Spin the back foot down, and again, warrior two, repeat. Giving the body time to adjust, build muscle memory, and assimilate. Press through the right foot until the legs straighten and release the arms by the side. We'll come into core triangle. And to do this, take your hands to your pelvis, press down through both feet, squeeze the leg energy up, feel the belly lift to the spine and all the way out through the skull. We're going to start to shift the pelvis and tip it over the right thigh as we start to reach the heart out and forward over the right foot. Keep the sideways lengthening evenly. You're not going to come very deep into this because we want to keep the side waist working and the belly working. Go ahead, bring the hands in at the heart with the elbows wide. Plug the shoulders in, and when you're ready, open the arms to a T like you're flying. Feel that the feet connect into the pelvis and that the whole torso is doing its own work. Tailbone to skull, one long line of energy. Bend into the right knee and fold the hands down to the floor. Fold the right hand to the inside of the right foot as you lift the left arm up to the sky for side angle with the hand down. Deep bend into that right knee, push the left foot down, belly to the spine, waving out through the skull. 
Fold the left hand back down to the floor, lift high into the left uh, toes, and we'll drop the left knee down for runner's lunge. You can open the right toes or walk the right foot over to the right a little bit more. Keep the pelvis nice and level in space, belly lifting to the spine, waving out through the skull. If you find it appropriate in your practice, you can always lower down to the forearms. To release, lift the back knee, stretch the right leg all the way back to plank. Inhale, exhale, lower through chaturanga. Relax down here for a second. We'll take our back bend sequence. Stretch the legs back and take them together. We'll come up, prop ourselves up onto the forearms, elbows slightly forward of the shoulders, hands clap together. Take the shoulders on the back as you press your forearms down and forward. Feel your belly lift to your spine and ripple all the way out through the skull. Lift the legs. Now maybe press the hands down and forward, maybe lift the elbows. Keep lifting the belly to the spine, ripple out through the skull. The neck is long, lengthening out from the shoulders. Come back down to the elbows and release. This time stretch your hands back and float up to Shalabhasana Locust. Heart is lifting, legs are lifting. Similar pose, this time you just don't have the arm support. Take full deep breaths here and release. Maybe you wiggle the pelvis left to right, letting all of those muscles go nice and soft. Hands underneath the elbows, strong legs, curl all the way up to your high back bend, straight arms. And exhale, use your belly. Go up and back, downward facing dog. Keep the right heel grounded, inhale, lift the left leg all the way up to the sky. Exhale, we'll bring the knee forward and plant the foot in between the hands. Spin your back foot flat and approach warrior two pose on this side. Belly waves back to the spine, lengthen all the way up through the torso as you eventually tee off the arms. Hold the shoulders in place here. Press the left foot down and forward as you straighten the left leg, release the arms by the side. Hands onto the pelvis so you can feel secure there, secure through the strength of the feet, strong leg energy. We're going to start to tip the pelvis over the left thigh bone. As that happens, take the heart more forward over the left foot. And you want to keep held together here, belly pulling to the spine, side waist hugging you in. So you're really learning about core integration. Take the hands in at the heart with the elbows teed open. Take the shoulders on the back and then tee off the arms like you're flying, hovering over your left leg. Stay long through your tailbone, all the way out through the skull, totally self-sufficient in the torso. And then fold the hands down. Take the left hand to the inside of the left leg, deep bend into that knee as much as you can and then stretch the right arm up to the sky for a version of extended side angle. Nice and deep into that left knee. And the more you use the left heel, the more you should feel strength through the underside of the left leg, deep into the left buttocks. Take the right hand back down to the floor, lift the back heel, and we'll gently lower the back knee down to the mat for a version of runner's lunge. Now again, you can turn the left toes open or heel toe the foot more open to the left. Just hang out here for a full few rounds of breath. You can always come down to the forearms.
to release, ground your hands, lift your back knee up off the mat, and then step the left foot back to high plank. Take a full inhale and plank, and exhale lower down to the floor. Second set of our back bend series. So prop yourself up on your forearms, hands clap together, pinky edge down. Take the shoulders on the back, and as you press down, start to lift the legs. Keep the belly lifting to the spine, rippling out through the skull as you lift the elbows, maybe. Keep pressing the hands down and forward. Try to stay as high as you can as you now release the arms by the side for Shalabhasana, Locust Pose, using all the same muscles. Try to hold this for another five, four, three, two, and one. When you're ready, gently release hands underneath the elbows and curl all the way up. This time, use your belly to pull your pelvis back over your knees. And if child's pose feels good, take that. If it doesn't feel good for whatever reason, just take an upright seated position. Come up through tabletop position. Walking the hands ever so slightly forward and then lean the heart in between the hands so you're in modified plank with your knees down. Take an inhale here as you set up. Resist the floor with your hands, with your belly and pelvis. And exhale, we'll come down through modified chaturanga. You wanna hold there to get strong and then push back up. We'll do that two more times. Exhale, coming down, spine in one line. Inhale, press back up. Option to lift the knees for the last one. Exhale, you come down halfway. And inhale, you press back up. This time, come all the way down to the ground. Building some arm strength. Now let's stretch the shoulders. Stretch the right arm open to a T. Place the right cheek on the floor. And using the left hand on the floor, you can push and roll the left side of the body to stack on top of the right side of the body. Realign the long edge of your body from your heels all the way through your skull. Maybe take your left hand to your left hip and let the elbow fall down to the floor behind you. Close the gap between the shoulder blades. Enjoy this restful moment with deep, luscious breaths. They still have that hint of a pause in there. When you're ready, roll back through center and switch your sides. Left arm out, right hand rolls you open. Enjoy the long line of energy from your heels through your skull. And if you can feel that in every yoga pose, that's really where the enjoyment of the pose is. No matter how challenging or new the pose may feel. Gently take the right hand back to the floor, roll onto the tummy, hands underneath the elbows as you curl up through your straight arm back bend, and then pull your pelvis back. Tuck the toes and sit back on the heels. Stretch the fascia on the underside of the feet. Belly waves back to the spine, ripple out through the skull. Let's stretch the triceps now. Arms reach up overhead. Bend the right elbow. The hand comes to the upper back. You take the left hand to the right elbow. Squeeze the elbow into the ear and pull the elbow back in space without losing that Tadasana spine. Release the arms back up through straight and switch the sides. Left elbow bends, hand to the upper back, and right hand helps the left elbow squeeze in by the ear and moves it back into the tricep stretch.
releasing the arms, take them back down underneath the shoulders and press back to downward facing dog. Shoulder blades spread nice and broad on the upper back as the spine moves toward the heart. Lift high into the tiptoes and then you can step, walk or hop all the way to the top of the yoga mat, forward fold. Inhale, ripple the heart forward to halfway and exhale, forward fold. Ground your feet and inhale, reach the arms out and up to the sky and exhale, hands together at the chest. Inhale, reach the arms out and up and exhale, fold from the groin, forward fold. Inhale, ripple forward, halfway lift. And exhale, ground your hands. Step your feet back one at a time until you're in plank position, top of a push-up. Inhale here. And exhale, nice and easy to the floor. Hands underneath the elbows, feet strong. Inhale, curl up, belly to spine, ripple out through the skull. Exhale, move the belly back first. Let the rest of the spine follow like a chain link necklace. Enjoy this last downward facing dog. And gently, Take yourself back down to tabletop position, hands and knees, and come to a seat. In this seated position, we'll take our cow face stretch in our hips. So you're gonna start by taking the right foot to the outside of the left hip, and you'll try to take the left foot to the outside of the right hip with the knees stacked over each other. Now, if this isn't working for you, just take a crisscross applesauce position with your right foot in front. Now, tent the fingers by your side, lift all the way up, and really gain space and integration through the whole torso. You might feel like this is as far as you want to go, which is totally appropriate for a lot of people. If you feel like your hips might give you a little more today, maybe you take your little spider, craw uh, spider claws forward you start walking the upper body into a forward fold. Now use your hands to really ground your pelvis down and back. Keep the feet flexed and active so that the legs are in the right bone relationship. And to get deeper into the fold, keep the belly rippling back to the spine and out through the skull. And that rippling action over time will allow more softness to happen through the hips, through the pelvis. Gently come all the way back up to an upright position. Unwrap your legs and take your other side. Trying to stack the knees one on top of the other. This time your left leg is underneath and the foot goes to the outside of the right hip. And your right foot goes to the outside of the left hip. Just adjust here. That's what the first moment of every pose is for. Now, if it starts to feel more appropriate for you to take your forward fold, you want to keep all of this integration that you've created in the starting of the shape, and then you might decide to crawl forward. And the mind controls the breath. So we want to give a little bit of space at the end of each breath cycle, just to make sure that the mind doesn't have an agenda. It's not trying to push you anywhere. It's dissolving boundaries, not reinforcing them. Grounding through the pelvis, 
Take the spine back to an upright position. You can gently release the crossing of the legs. Then you can windshield wiper the knees a little bit left and right. Maybe you take the hands behind you for support. And then scooching to the top of the yoga mat, reach the arms forward, keep the shoulders in place, the throat long, as you curl down with your belly muscles all the way down onto your back. Step the feet in closer to the pelvis, and we'll set up for two sets of bridge pose, Setu Bandhasana. Feel the arms strong by your sides. Feel the legs in the right line of energy from the pelvis facing forward. And then push your feet down and forward. Draw your shins back towards your pelvis as you lift the pelvis up. Try to use every part of the leg, every part of the leg, and that's activated by the feet. So just use trial and error. As the back of the pelvis lifts to the sky, drop your frontal hip bones into your body. Use your arms, press them down so that the chest can lift more skyward towards the chin. Next, exhale. Keep the belly going down to the low back as you lower the pelvis to the floor. We'll take a second round of bridge. And if you happen to feel ready for a full wheel pose and that's in your practice, you can also move there as well. In any case, you'll lift through the pelvis and take whatever version of whatever pose you're taking. Gently lower the hips back down. The belly comes down with you. Then you can heel toe the feet to the mat, the outer edges of the mat, and let the knees fall over to the right for a baby twist. Keep the feet flexed, second toe, center ankle, center knees aligned, so that the rotation is really coming from the hips. Maybe you lengthen the arms overhead and clasp elbows and look over to your left. That should feel good. Keep your arms there, just lift your knees back up through center, and then you can take them over to the left, a little baby twist. Again, keep the feet nice and active here so that the thighs and the leg bones themselves are in neutral, but they're rotating in the hip. Gently take the knees back through center. Stretch the legs out nice and long on the yoga mat. Reach the arms overhead, a nice big stretch. And we're gonna reach all the way up like Frankenstein as we come up to a seat. Stretching the legs out nice and long. If you're tighter in your hamstrings, you wanna bend into the knees until you can bring the belly comfortably towards the thighs. If you're a little bit more open, keep the legs straight on the ground. We'll take a Paschimottanasana, seated forward bend, so you can gently begin to crawl yourself forward. Nice calming forward fold to end the practice. Introverted space. If you're more open in the hamstrings, the legs are straight, but the backs of the knees are ever so slightly lifted from the floor. Maybe you can feel that that directs more energy into the calves. Let the breaths become even more calming, like a swinger who's swinging on a swing set. gently begin to walk yourself back up to a seated position.
and then gently we'll bring one foot in and then the other for a seated position. If you need to sit upright on something, even a chair is good at home. But before we take our Shavasana, take a nice, easy, seated meditation. Close the eyes, align the spine, and just be here for whatever is present in your experience. Maintain this inner level of stillness as you gently begin to roll all the way down onto your back and prepare for your final rest, Shavasana. Legs outstretched, skull soft, arms by the side. Take a moment to notice how you're setting your body. Set it with intention, set it well. And then gently release everything into the floor. Release the bones, the muscles, connective tissues. Release the organs. Finally, release the experience of the mind. You can't really control how active or quiet your mind is. The only thing you can really control is your relationship to your mind. Are you inside your thoughts, participating as the main character, the ego of the thought? Or are you a bit more removed, able to notice the thoughts as if they were clouds going through the sky?
maintain this level of internal stillness and invite tiny movements to the fingers and the toes. Begin to wake the body up slowly, rolling through the wrists and the ankles. Just generally going with your instinct of what feels good, letting the body almost move itself. You can stretch the body long, the arms overhead. And gently step the feet in close to the pelvis. Stay easy as you roll over to either side and rest again. Stay easy as you press yourself up to a seated upright position. Cross your legs the other way from what, how we did in meditation. Thank you for joining in this practice. Namaste.